Many computers have been made over the course of many years, and most certainly not every one of them survives the test of time. Today we look back at the first generation iMac G5 from 2004 and the science behind it. Welcome to the first episode in Season 3 of this channel, glad to see you guys here. To start things off, the iMac contains a 1.8GHz PowerPC G5 CPU using the first generation of IBM's PowerPC 970 platform. This CPU was already slightly outdated by 2004 standards, as by 2004, the PowerMac G5 lineup has moved to the less power-hungry PowerPC 970FX CPU. This machine also contains 2GB of PC 3200 400MHz DDR-SD RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce 5200FX with 64MB of video RAM via an AGP-8X internal display bus which powers a 1440x900 resolution 17-inch display. Did I mention, it has a brand new SanDisk 120GB SSD which is dual booting macOS, Leopard, and Tiger. My focus on this particular iMac stems from its eventual hardware failure rate for this model and how this contrasts with my own iMac G5. This machine is very special, particularly due to its lack of bulging capacitors. The vague history of this machine starts where its capacitor is replaced supposedly by Apple. I tested the machine out by running it 24-7 for nearly 5 months, only to find the hardware working in pristine condition. Here is an example of the pristine capacitors that I speak of. Notice how each and every one is not bulging or discolored or damaged in any capacity. The capacitors highlighted in red are 1800 microfarad capacitors operating at 6.3 volts, which in total should be 18 on the first generation iMac G5s. The group of 7 capacitors highlighted in yellow are 1000 microfarad capacitors operating at 16 volts. The thermal design of this machine is not too shabby though, it could be better. With the installation of the SSD, there is less internal heat production. In a fan-cooled system such as this one, the ability to thermally dissipate the heat sinks nearly entirely depends on the ambient temperature within the machine. By reducing the internal thermal profile slightly, there is a margin for more effective cooling. This in turn breeds a healthier environment for the capacitors and generally all of the internal components. It helps that the CPU and GPU had their thermal paste replaced recently, and that the iMac is very well maintained. With the touch of a mini VGA to VGA adapter, multitasking comes to life through the use of a second independent monitor. Screen spanning doctor 1.3 was used to make this possible, and now I can do more things with more space using the power of just this one machine. Although it's dated with macOS 10.5.8 Leopard being the maximum OS, it can still browse the web, use Spotify, and a number of third-party applications. This machine makes for a great multitasker if you're looking for a very simple machine. The responsiveness improves dramatically when switching to macOS Tiger, however the amount of applications available isn't as numerous as Leopard's selection. With all of that out of the way, where do I stand on the iMac G5? I like to believe that older technology should still have a chance to be usable and not absolutely everything defined as obsolete by modern terms is genuinely applicable. This iMac is still gorgeous. It's blocky, has thick bezels, and looks like an oversimplified version of a modern computer, but that's what I like about it. Everything fades away into the acrylic transparency, the quality, and the sheer compactness of design for this era. It's worth keeping for sure. Thank you guys for watching another episode, I'll see you guys soon. Super Ice Cream Sandwich, over and out.